What's up, party people? Mr. ASMR boy here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below. So, um, yeah, this was a full class, but I accidentally got started. Accidentally. So we have some eggnog with liquor here, and this bottle is from Trader Joe's, as you can see. And might as well just finish this one off. So, it's old-fashioned eggnog liquor made with real dairy cream. Oops, some lactose. Uh-oh. Spiced rum and French brandy. So, it's actually legit. I never really have more than, like, two glasses. Two small glasses. Because this will get you fucked up, so I will um, pour a little bit of eggnog into my cup. Alright, cheers everybody, cheers. So, as I was saying,
guess I, I only shoot on days that I get haircuts. It's, I literally don't think about it like that, but just so happened to be that I got a haircut again today, two weeks later. But yeah, that's one of my uh, favorite pastimes is a, a haircut. I feel like haircuts are pretty, uh, pretty vital. A safe haircut though, I had to wear a mask in order to get it, but uh, he still did a good job with um, fading, with giving my hair a, a fade. I get a high fade and then on the top I kind of just did a comb to the side, somewhat of a comb over. Uh, that's how you know I'm getting old. I used to hate comb overs when I was younger. Like I really hated when people would do comb overs, especially when it was like the trend to do. Um, for me, as an adult now, I like them only because they look very neat and clean, and they're very, it's super low maintenance, like I don't have to spend a ton of time combing my hair, all I do is literally put some, I use the Suavecito Matte Pomade, it's a green uh, tube, and it's like 11 or 12 bucks on Amazon, put a little bit of that in my hair. I don't even use a brush, no blow dryer, none of that stuff, no comb, just my fingers, and yeah, I actually do not own a brush, and I do not own a comb, so there's a random tip, I mean a random, um, man, can't think straight right now on this second glass, a random fact, a random fact, as if like the word fact is a huge word. ever 
since then, my family has, um, you know, given back in quite a few ways, um, to this specific organization. It's called Childhood Cancer Foundation of Southern California. So, yeah, my family, we've done a few different, uh, sort of initiatives that we've kind of put together just amongst, like, my family, and, um, we've donated, I want to say, like, 40 Sensi Buddies at one point. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Sensi Buddies are, they are, Sensi is a company who makes scented items. Um, they do, like, wallflowers, they do the pots where you burn, like, the, the scented wax, and it smells pretty amazing. So we donated a bunch of the Sensi Buddies, 40 of them, to the cancer ward at Loma Linda University Children's Hospital. And um, this was some years back, and they're like stuffed animals. And um, I actually have one um, that I kind of purchased for myself. Uh, not that like I use it or anything, but I just thought it was cool and I really wanted to support the uh, the cause, but I, I, I kept one that I purchased, and, um, because if you purchased it, the sum of that money, we kind of made it to where if you purchase these items, the money also goes to the organization, so I bought, like, a couple of them for the, uh, for the hospital, but then I also kept, bought one for myself, and, um, I have, his name's Leo, it's Leo the Lion, and, um, it smells like like it's scented vanilla, but you can get these scent packs that go inside of the stuffed animal. And they have a bunch of different scents, but mine was vanilla, and I had Leo the Lion. It's actually in my closet right now. But, um, so yeah, so we donated those to the cancer ward, and it was around the holiday season. And, uh, but yeah, I, I want to say we had just enough to cover for uh, all of the kids in that ward at that given time so that was really cool and uh, we've donated like beanies and scarves to the children there in the winter a lot of times I feel like all of our items that we donate is always around holiday season um, we recently did something where we uh, donated items actually I didn't get to participate in this this year Maybe I did. No, I did the Christmas one. But my, my mom did. She donated um, a couple gift cards for a holiday basket um, to give out to the families who, again, um, may be needing some extra support during the holiday season in terms of, of funds because it's very expensive whenever you have a child undergoing treatment for childhood cancer. I know a lot of people are put in the position to where they may have to sell their home, uh, sell their cars, uh, sell anything just to be able to afford the proper treatment and care for their child because it's so expensive and, you know, healthcare and uh, insurance covers a lot of it, but that amount that's still left with the patient or the patient's parent is still sometimes in the like multi like it could still be like ten thousand dollars and um you know not everyone just has like ten thousand dollars sitting in their bank account so it's so important to um, assist and support these families during such a difficult time and you know, that's something that i'm super passionate about is uh being vocal about that but childhood cancer foundation of southern california is very good at that and what they do um is to basically assist families while their child is undergoing treatment and they also assist the children too with uh, providing like different providing them with different opportunities to basically put a smile on their face while they're undergoing treatment whether that is through a sensi buddy whether that's through a reading activity whether that's giving them a book, whether that is um, putting together a holiday event or a trunk or treat drive through event. They do all those kind of things for kids to like engage them and to still give them an opportunity to celebrate, but in a way that is not going to 
put them at risk and um, to put them at risk with like um, coming in contact with someone that they shouldn't while they're undergoing treatment just because when somebody is undergoing a chemo treatment treatment for what's it called when somebody's undergoing chemotherapy um, you know your immune system your I believe your white blood cells are like completely depleted and so you can't really get sick and so they're really good at doing that and helping families by um, putting together these really like socially aware events where um, they're really geared towards the patients and so I think that's amazing but also this is a really cool gray goose glass that uh, my family my mom actually gave it to me and uh, it was a giant gray goose bottle with these two gift or glasses that were like a extra gift from Costco and I dig them I feel like they're the perfect size but um so the nonprofit organization Childhood Cancer Foundation of Southern California as I was saying they also assist families and parents um, by providing them with a place to stay a lot of times when children are in the hospital for uh, cancer treatment and chemotherapy and whatnot they are in the hospital for weeks or even months at a time and so parents a lot of times they don't live near the city where the hospital is at um, especially when it's so dependent upon your network of available hospitals that provide that type of treatment sometimes people could be living like a couple hours away and um you really don't want to leave your child alone right like while in the hospital or you and if you have to you definitely don't want to be like extra far away from them so um they also provide support and, and monetary funds to assist them with uh, either booking a hotel or letting them stay in their um, house that they kind of operate that is near the hospital and they also provide families with gas cards to uh, you know put gas because it's, it's expensive to drive back and forth and um, yeah so like all that stuff and uh, yeah it kind of makes me a little bit sad just talking about it and just thinking about the families who are um, who may potentially be struggling out there and that's a, a cause that I will uh, always support and that's definitely always going to be at the core of uh, me and who I am so I feel very proud to and, and just happy to assist and help in any way that I can like I can't donate a million dollars because I don't have a million dollars if I did I, I easily would but to be able to to always continuously um just donate like uh, 50 100 bucks here and there for anything that I can or what they need and so yeah it's always important to lend a helping hand to those who are in need so yeah but they're they're a great organization and do a lot for the southern california region
mass communications with an emphasis in media studies. Uh, my brother is actually going to start, my younger brother is going to start college here next fall, and I'm super excited for him. So what are we in December? He'll be starting in September of 2021. That's about nine months away, so literally my time spent at Cal State was one of the funnest times of my life, like one of the funnest time periods, everything. It was just so much fun to be surrounded by so many people that are similar to yourself, but very different at the same time. And when I say similar, I just mean like having the same interests, and that's what I really liked about it. I legit, um, yeah, I didn't want to graduate. Like, I wanted to, obviously, but I just had too much of a great experience there to uh, want to finish. So any of y'all who are in college right now, I mean, of course, right now is a whole different experience, so it has to really suck to, um, you know, be paying tuition that is reflective or reminiscent to in-person learning when you're basically almost somewhat like teaching yourself like remotely so I, I, I feel for all of those who are you know especially even in high school too but those who are in college for for something they're so passionate about and not being able to experience your you know peers or your classmates or your friends in person as frequently to be able to connect and to feed off of each other's ideas and um that was probably the main reason why i didn't want to uh graduate all right i'll i'll, I'll share this but uh i actually like legit um leading up to graduation i cried like literally like two times because I didn't want, I, I was like so sad that I was going to be graduating from college, like usually you're crying like tears of joy or some people, like it's not even that big of a deal to them, but for me, I was so sad that I was graduating that it was done. I had like legit the time of my life. Um, and even now, like three, three and a half years later. I understand why I felt that way because, um, yeah, I feel like I still haven't had a experience that has reached that level of fulfillment. I'm sure that I will at some point in life. Like, I've, I've had a lot of, I would say, professional successes and, you know, and have gotten to achieve a decent, um, or a I'm like definitely um, under or devaluing my accomplishments, but I've achieved like a decent amount of stuff in life, but still nothing has been able to compare to that experience. And I think something that I need to get away from is being so comparative. I, I hate when people, I don't wanna use the word hate because that's speaking negativity into existence but I really dislike when people compare people to other people people do that a lot I notice to to women in the world and they'll com compare one girl to another girl compare her looks to her looks compare you know her success to her success compare you know this person's net worth to that person's net worth and it happens with men too but it happens way more with women and I really hate that Oh man, I said the word again. I, I really don't like that just because I feel like everybody is great in their own way. But everyone is better than someone at something. Like we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses. But say I'm a decent singer, I have a good voice, let's say that. But then I'm singing next to one of my colleagues who has an amazing voice like literally comparing me to like comparing okay like basically comparing let's say for instance selena gomez many of you guys know who she is i'm sure the whole world knows who she is she's cute she has a good voice 
Does she have a great voice? No. Like, comparing her to, okay, Christina Aguilera. Does she have a great voice? Yes, she has a great voice. She can, like, blow the roof off of a, like, freaking arena. I've actually heard her perform live before. She's amazing. And, um, just because Selena Gomez doesn't have the same vocal chops and ability as Christina Aguilera does not mean that she can't sing. Like, that's so messed up to discredit somebody and their abilities and their success just because you feel they don't match up to somebody else. It may be true, but once you compare people, you also start to devalue the other person, and I don't think that's right in life. So, yeah, I, um, I just, I hate the whole, like, comparison thing, and so this all ties back to my experiences in life and how I said that nothing that I've experienced at whilst going to school for my undergrad at Cal State. None of my other experiences in life since then in the past three and a half years have been able to like match up to that, but nothing needs to match up to that. Like that is its own time and, and space and I'm I was super appreciative of that. And I feel that I've been appreciative of many different things in my life since then and it just last year I got um, recognized by California State Assembly member Aloise Gomez Reyes as a 30 under 30 leader in um, District 47 in the state of California, which that was really cool and an amazing accomplishment and to forever be uh, a 30 under 30 like young leader in the community, which is which is great or in the region. But um, yeah, that's I really and seeing like even that to me when I really start to compare I'm like it's still not as significant as my experience at Cal State just because I loved it so much I loved every minute from the friends to the programs I was in to working on campus to the professors to the classes I took like I thoroughly enjoyed every single experience I was like a part of the the school's radio station the school's newspaper I wrote for that um I was also part of this school's like um it was a show called Local Matters, and we shot, like, news segments, and it was aired on, like, local public television, and that was really cool, and so, and I also worked on campus as a, a, a audio operator, so on, like, the school's events and stuff, I would go and, like, set up speakers and hook up an audio board and, um, kind of operate the, the lights and the sound for any type of event, whether that was, like, a public speaking event or some type of rally or um just anytime like maybe we just played music during during lunch hour or something like that so that was a lot of fun but yeah that's one thing that I that's definitely my advice for you guys and my advice for myself is to just quit comparing stuff in life like just let everything stand on its own and on its own time because I feel like I was so often we discredit experiences, people, and more just because it doesn't match up to like one pivotal moment that we experienced in life. And like I said, we always do that with people subconsciously. It's like we'll compare one person to the next and uh, I don't think that's right. It's, it's like not cool to do that just because you just got to find the good in every situation, moment, and experience because I think deep down somewhere, sometimes you really got to dig deep. You really got to dig deep for the good, but if you look hard enough, I think we can find it. So, yeah. Sorry for that really long rant, but um, I got real passionate for a second. <laughs> I just realized that I did not take a photo or take a photo a thumbnail alright hopefully that works but yeah I feel like every time I shoot a video I'm sitting like 
hunchback of Notre Dame or something. Quasimodo's stepbrother for a second. Um, also, I know for a minute I was shooting a lot of videos in my kitchen. What do you guys think about this background? What do you think about it? Be honest with me, you guys are my friends. So, let me know. Also, I think I might be shooting an unboxing video very soon. Probably, maybe tomorrow. I don't want to speak ahead of myself because um, sometimes I go MIA and I like to be a man of my word. So just know that an unboxing video coming very soon. So cheers to that. And, and cheers to me keeping that uh, idea out in the universe. I was going to say... I was gonna say promise, but I don't want to use that word, it's too strong. Killed that. As you can see, it is a Grey Goose cup. Responder. 
like your comment it's just I didn't see it that's all um, yeah there's no excuse after this so anyways guys